Thank you for the opportunity to present our poster titled Patient Disposition Health-Related Quality of Life in MIST-D3, Opportunities to Improve Decision-Making for Critically Ill Intracerebral Hemorrhage Patients. It is estimated that 50% of patients with intracerebral hemorrhage will die within 30 days, and only 20% are expected to have a full functional recovery at six months. As a result, recovering intracerebral hemorrhage is prolonged and unpredictable. This results in challenges in estimating long-term health-related quality of life. And for many factors, including the unpredictability involved in predicting prognosis, withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment is the most common cause of immediate death in this patient population. What is concerning is that preconceived notions about futility of care may prompt withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment, and the use of predictive models in patient populations in whom withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment is commonly performed may lead to self-fulfilling prophecies. ICU clinicians are often involved in guiding conversations with families about goals of care, but rarely participate in long-term follow-up. Many patients, families, and care teams, including nurses and physicians, desire early prognostication, but caution is advised about offering precise prognoses early after intracerebral hemorrhage. Each of these factors led us to want to learn more about the long-term health-related quality of life outcomes and disposition of critically ill patients with ICH. Using MISTI-3 trial data, we performed a matched cohort analysis using an established severity index to compare ICH survivors with patients who had withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment. Multivariable logistic regression was used, adjusting for six pre-specified variables, five of which influenced disease severity, age, Glasgow coma scale, deep ICH location, stability ICH, and intraventricular hemorrhage volume. Comorbidities were included to the published severity index as this factor has been described to influence do not resuscitate status in patients with ICH. This resulted in a modified severity index, which I will refer to as MSI. After matching survivors with equal MSI scores and coefficients to withdrawal of life sustaining treatment patients at baseline, Uroqual visual analog scale scores and patient disposition were evaluated at day 30, 180, and 365. The EQ5D instrument includes a short descriptive system and a visual analog scale known as the EQVAS. The EQVAS is a quantitative measure of health outcome and allows for respondents to self-report their health state on a vertical visual analog scale ranging from 100, best imaginable health state, to zero, worst imaginable health state. It is patient-generated, well-validated, and is obtained in less than one minute, minimizing patient burden. There were 61 participants in MISD-3 who had withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment and 379 survivors. Of the survivors, 90 were matched to withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment patients by MSI score and coefficient. At baseline, there was no difference noted between patients who had withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment and matched survivors with the exception of deep ICH location. Figure 1 shows the disposition of ICH survivors matched to patients who had withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment over time. At day 30 following injury, referring to the gold bars, 33% of matched survivors remained in an acute care facility, while 45% were transferred to a rehabilitation facility. The percentage of matched survivors living in a long-term care facility or home was roughly equal, approximately 10%. By day 180, referring to the blue bars, there were no patients that remained in an acute care facility. Approximately 9% were in a rehabilitation facility, 25% of survivors were in a long-term care facility, and 65% of matched survivors had returned home. At one year, noted in green, approximately 20% of survivors were in a long-term care facility, 3% were in a rehabilitation facility, and 73% of matched survivors were home. Figure 2 displays the mean EQVS score of matched survivors by time and disposition. At day 30, the mean EQVS score of matched survivors living at home, referring to the green bars, was higher than those living in a rehabilitation facility, long-term care facility, or an acute care hospital. We see a similar trend at day 180 and 365, with matched survivors living at home having the highest mean EQVS score. At day 365, the mean EQVS score of matched survivors living in a rehabilitation facility and home approached the U.S. population norm of 74.9 for age-matched individuals who never experienced an ICH. For all groups, the mean EQVS score of matched survivors increased over time. Our findings suggest that ICH survivors who had statistically comparable demographic and clinical characteristics to ICH patients who had withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment demonstrated improvement in health-related quality of life over time, and the majority were home by one year. So if goals of care discussions are to include health-related quality of, of life outcomes, including the return to home, our results suggest that early prognostication ICH should be used with caution, as this informs the decision-making process for families of critically ill patients with ICH. Thank you for your time.